I was working uh, as a journalist with the BBC. Um, and I'd been asked to go out with uh, another journalist friend of mine um, to Greece and do a piece on Golden Dawn, which is um, a far-right, uh, extreme far-right party in Greece. Um, and I'd been t back to Greece a number of times um, since the economic crisis began, um, but I, I never really felt it as much as I did on this particular time when I went back. Um, and we'd done various interviews in the day with uh, members of Golden Dawn and um, the piece was about police collusion and Golden Dawn. And I suddenly found myself in this square in Athens and there are, are many squares across Athens and uh, across Greece in general. And they're really lovely places because it kind of just brings or they used to bring the fa families together. And from my memories when I was younger, I'd remember being little, being on my bike, being near the sea. There'd be grandmothers sat there. There'd be a little kiosk selling sweets. And everything seemed really lovely in my mind. And suddenly, I, I was in a, a, a similar square, but it was just awful. And there was a church with uh, Nazi signs everywhere. The floor had like racist graffiti, Greece is just for Greeks. On top of the floor there were migrant kids dressed in rags playing with a ball. There were police asking um, illegal immigrants for their papers, running after them, handcuffing them. And really I went home that day um, back to the hotel and I got in the shower and I just started crying. And I remember it so clearly because it's the only time I can ever remember crying for a country. And that seems so strange to me because every time I go back to Greece, I always, I never want to leave. I always um, miss it and, um, because it reminds me of my childhood. And this particular time I, I left and it, it wasn't so much that I knew I'd miss it, it was that I was scared that the Greece that I knew was, was disappearing. Um, as I saw it in the economic crisis. And so really all these thoughts coming to me, I just had to kind of get them down. And in the end, all these thoughts turned into an article that I'd written on my blog, which then went on to um, the BBC website, which got turned into a, a BBC radio piece on, on Radio 4. And also Asha um, saw it and asked me um, if she could, could use it in the book, so, which I was very pleased with. So, so what made you decide to write about like this pers this pers particular perspective? Well, it, it was almost like I didn't have a choice. It was just there were so many emotions there that I felt, um, and I just felt like I ha I had to get it. Just came flowing out of me. I just had to get it down. And I really I remember being sat there in um, the airport at the airport, like leaving on my way going back on my phone and on my laptop. I didn't even have a blog set up. I think this was like the first blog post that I'd ever written, but I just had, it had to come out. And I remember being at the airport and just set, setting up my blog, like just so that I could post this bit of writing because I, I had to get it somewhere because mm -hmm. um, I would found I had found it so upsetting. What was it like meeting with young people there and, and discussing the political situation? Anything stand out sort of experiences? Yeah, I mean, the thing that really upsets me the most right now is that amongst um, young Greek people, there's 60, uh, around 60% unemployment, which is like you can't even imagine. Um, and so, so many people are leaving. And I, I will always be like on the plane and I'll be meeting somebody like either going back to Greece to visit their parents and they've left and they live in Germany. You know, or they're leaving Greece because they've just found a new job, I don't know, in, in the States or in Australia or wherever it is. Um, and that for me is, is the saddest thing. And it's like people's um, lives have been put on hold. The older people are worried about their, their, their children and you know, think that they're not gonna have grandchildren because the children won't be able to grow up and afford to have children. And it's like everybody's lives have been put on hold in Europe and that's, for me as well, that's the most shocking thing, that th this is happening in Europe. Mm -hmm. Did any sort of big events happen while you were there that were just totally shocking to you? Um, well, Greek people are well known, I think, for demonstrating and their riots. And um, yeah, when I was there, I remember being, I've been in, involved in a couple of riots, just um, covering them. 
Um, and there was one I went on, I wasn't covering it, but um, I went along to see, and it was, um, it, was a, it was a demonstration against Golden Dawn. And actually being in that situation and having petrol bombs being sort of thrown um, right next to you and the, feeling the charge and everybody running forward and um, people coming to, in a weird way, like I think the crisis has helped people come together a lot more. Um, at least I feel that I've seen that, especially amongst young people. And in riots and demonstrations, um, you meet so many interesting people that have the same ideas as you, that um, are as passionate as you about fighting for your country and fighting for its future and for your future. And um, that, that perhaps doesn't necessarily happen unless you're put in that sort of situation. Mm -hmm. Now, are you also working on a film about this? Could you tell us about that? Yeah, so the, the film isn't necessarily to do with um, Golden Dawn, but it is to do with the crisis. And one thing that um, I found when I was uh, working in Greece, when there were a lot of young people, as I said, that their lives were put on hold. Um, a cousin of mine, her and her friends, her girlfriends would, would say to me, you know, we just we can't meet anybody right now. Like the men don't want to take you out because they feel they need to pay and they've got no money to take you out. Or, um, you know, how can I be independent? You know, 30 year old women having to live with their families because they can't afford to leave. Um, they're working like every hour God sends, so um, they don't even have time to go out and meet anybody. Um, so it's like, uh, you know, women forced to um, live like teenagers, really. And that led me to um, have the idea of creating the, this documentary film uh, called Love in the Time of Crisis. So how uh, the Greek economic crisis affects um, people's relationships and the way that people perceive love. Um, they say that you know when poverty comes in the, through the door, love goes out the window. And that, that interested me and there was a big, uh, graffiti on the streets of Athens which said uh, in Greek love or nothing and that really stood out to me um, and there are so many positives and so many negatives about the crisis and the way that it, it affects people as you'll see I guess in the trailer. Mm. Okay.